Welcome to the Chosen Few Expat Show. I'm Alonzo. Today we have with us a guest who's been an expat in Panama for eight years, the founder of the Black Expats in Panama Facebook page, and an entrepreneur in Panama. Charlotte Van Horn is joining us today. So welcome to the show, Charlotte. Hey, it's your girl, Charlotte Van Horn, here with Alonzo. Glad to, glad to have you. I've been looking forward to this one. This is what I've been looking too. forward to for a while. Um, you know, you're doing some great things out there, but I really just um, excited to have you back in Panama because now your boots on the ground. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of wanted to wait until then before we before we did this, but I really have been looking forward to meeting you and speaking with you and conducting this interview. So with that, if you would tell us about your background, uh, where you're from and um, how you decided to become an expat in Panama. Um, well, I am a Jersey girl. I'm from South Jersey, uh, Glass Jersey. 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 Hi. Straight out of Jersey. Straight out of Jersey, baby. I'm like right between Philadelphia and Atlantic City. Um, that's how small my town is. I got to put markers on it. But that's where I was raised. Um, and then I currently live in Virginia. I've been in Virginia since, I want to say, 98 um, is when I came to Virginia. Um, I own uh, uh, Locks Forever, and it's pretty much um, our specialty is Sister Locks. And um, I'm married to Alfredo Gibbs Van Horn. That's my man. That's my husband, man, friend. And we have um, three daughters and two granddaughters. All right. All right. Sounds great. So, uh, what made you decide to um, go to move to Panama? or become an expat in Panama, leave Virginia? Well, um, I my husband is Panamanian. So mm -hmm. Alfredo is a returning Panamanian. So that had everything to do, of course, with me wanting to come to um, Panama. And to be honest with you, when I met him, I met him in 93. And when I met him, he said, you know, I'm gonna re when I retire one day, I'm going back to Panama. I was like, oh, that's nice. You know, because back in 93, my mindset, I could never imagine ever leaving the country of uh, the United States to live mm -hmm. anywhere else. And um, it was a, several years after that, that that I ended up going to Panama and seeing it, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. So the first time I visited Panama was 2004. Um, with Alfredo and I love his family, you know, his whole family is still here. Um, and that's how I ended up choosing Panama. Okay. So okay. what area of the country do you all live in and why did you decide to live there? Okay. Don't get me started because you know how I feel about Prisa Del Golf. Yes, honey. I already oh know the answer, but you're the answer. Listen. We live in Brisa de Golf Norte, and um, Brisa is a suburb, and everybody knows I'm a suburban chick. I'm not trying to live in the mountains, I'm not trying to live in the ocean, but I like to be able to get to places if I want to, but I like stuff around me, and that is what Brisa encompasses. Um, Brisa de Golf is about a 15-minute ride from Panama City and about a 15-minute ride to the airport. That works for me too. Mm -hmm. um, Brisa, I think my husband said when he was growing up, he always thought this area was beautiful. And um, the way that we ended up choosing Brisa, because I didn't know anything about it, was we had decided at some point, let's just start looking around at things we might want to buy at some point. And um, he had one of his couple of cousins that lived over here and we were out with his parents and we ended up coming out here to this area and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, not even knowing what was to come in this area. It seemed like then back in 2011 is when we actually started building. Um, it wasn't nearly as developed as it is now, but it's almost like the town is brand new. Um, mm -hmm. The maintenance here is very good. The, um, it's, it's a very clean area. Uh, we live in a, they have lots of gated communities, um, you know, and, and I just like it. It's easy to get to everything. My husband is a veteran. They have a hospital, Hospital uh, the Brisa, 
and um, they take care of U.S. vets, and uh, he's retired Air Force, so that worked out well. He gets excellent treatment there. You know, the people that we met in our neighborhood were just, you know, wonderful, not too far away from our parents, so he was raised in Parque La Febre, and um, it just works, and I think for me, because I am the suburban chick, um, I think for me, being that I'm really not fluent in Spanish at all, I'm not even on front, um, it kind of gave me, being here makes me feel like home in a sense. You know, there are a lot of people that speak Spanish, not to say that they don't, but out of all the things that you have to deal with when you go into a foreign land, I think the language, when the language is different, that puts an extra something on top. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot of suburban feel about Brisa, and I just love it. I can, um, they have a, a train that comes here. Um, the, the new Metro comes here. They have all kinds of buses, um, the Metro bus, you know, Uber is here. You can have taxis. So there's, you can walk to everything. There's great sidewalks. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, I like Brisa for me. And my husband does too, thank God. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it definitely helps if, it, uh, if he enjoys it all. Yes, right? yes. But I know you mentioned um, <clears throat> the Metro and the subway, so just want to mention to people, just in case they didn't see that, in our uh, Why Move to Panama Part 1 video, we noted Panama, you can ride the bus there. It's like 25 cents to ride the bus. They have a brand new subway, um, pretty much brand spanking new. You ride that for like 35 cents, okay? So... You know, and she, as, a, as Charlotte mentioned, they do have Uber, so you can get around. You can Uber, like, all over the place, $2, $3, $3.50, where, you know, all over the city. So, I mean, yes. that's, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> so I just want to add that. And we're right off the highway. Mm -hmm. There is a, uh, it's called Corridor Norte, mm -hmm. and it's just like being in the States. I mean, it's probably, like, a, at least a three-lane highway on each side. And it has, um, they have like what's similar to an easy pass in right, the United right. States, but they're actually more sophisticated because they just got like this see-through um, sticker that you put on your window and you update it with money and everything like that. So you don't have those big bulky um, monitors that we have, but we actually have a designated exit for our community. Brisa oh, okay. doesn't know oh. what tank. Yeah, we, we rolling, we rolling. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Um, there are some areas in the U.S. now that are finally catching up with that. Like instead really? of having a big transponder thing in your window, they yeah. have the sticker. There's a there's a few of them. They're catching up, but um, yeah. they, I think they were a little bit behind on that. But um, mm -hmm. so can you tell us what would you say are the three most positive things about living in Panama? I know you just you know we talked about Brisa del Golf Norte and your love for it, but just in general. You know, what would you say are the three most positive things you would like about living in Panama? I would say the three most positive things are, number one, I like the warm climate. Um, I like the warm climate. I could do a little, I could do with a little less rainy season, tell you the truth, but I'll take that. Um, I like, I like the warm cl uh, climate. And for some reason, I just like the way I feel when I'm here. And to me, I, that's kind of like not something I can put in words, but it's it's a reality to me. I feel different um, when I'm here. I feel more relaxed. Um, I get absolutely amazing, incredible sleep when I'm here. And um, there is a lot to do in Panama. There is a lot to do in Panama. There's like always lots of... Um, you know, shows that you can go to, you know, they have festivals. I'm not that big on crowds and stuff, but there's always a lot to do. Um, the food is amazing um, in Panama. The food tastes so good. And oh my Lord, don't get me started on that. <laughs> um, I'm it just up. feels good. It just feels, it feels like home um, when I'm here. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, I had some of the same experience I can attest to when you talk about sleeping better and yeah. just feeling better. Um, and it just, to me, it feels like when I'm there, um, there's just like a weight that's lifted off me or whatever that I feel constantly um, in the United States of America. Yes. So, yes. Um, I'd like you said, can explain it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is an interesting time for me also because, as some people know, I haven't been back to Panama since March. Mm -hmm. 
So this was my first time coming back. And I've been separated from my husband the whole time, separated from Panama, from my husband, from my Panamanian family. And uh, my husband's parents are older. And we just thought it's better for him to be here. Um, and because I go back and forth. That's the other right, thing. Right. My residence is I, I go back and forth to Panama every every month. So because we still have businesses at in the states that we attend to. Um, but now that I'm back, I'm telling you, I've been like cooped up for nine, 10 months. And I said, when I get to Panama, I can't wait. I'm going to get some sun, you know, and I, and this and that. But to tell you, I have just been content just to be here. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It's yeah, just amazing. Right. And for your trip <laughs> back, you know, you're looking at what, about a four hour flight there, I guess, maybe mm -hmm. back in the D.C.? Right, straight, straight ahead, shot, right? Straight shot, yeah, just straight like, shot. Yeah. And um, that's the other convenient thing about Panama is that you know, and I don't do no layers. I sh I'm, I'm a Copa snob. I only fly mm -hmm. Copa Air. <laughs> I fly nobody else. I fly Copa Air. They take good care of me. I feel like the customer service is good. Uh, when I traveled on the second, they had a lot of things in place to make me feel comfortable. Um, with with traveling, you know, in the middle of COVID, and that meant a lot too. But can I just tell you something else, Alonzo? Baby, when I got on that plane, I hadn't been on a plane in nine months. And when I got on that plane and settled in, and full disclosure, I do business class. I sat back, and when that plane took off, I, I felt so, I almost felt like I could cry. Because sometimes during this time, you are just searching for normalcy. And you got to remember, I was doing that plane thing every month. And I've been wearing masks way before it was cool because I was flying so much. But when it took off, I just felt like, oh, everything is going to be OK. You know, we, we're getting through this COVID and we will get back to normal life sometime. And I just had that peace come over me um, as I was coming back. And I've been peaceful ever since, mostly. Mostly, huh? mostly. So for people who don't know, Copa is a partner airline. I think they're partnered with United. They're very world-renowned airline, top airline in Panama. Great customer service. So um, don't hesitate to book a flight with Copa if you see it. So just so people mm -hmm. know that. Very good. So what would you say are your top three, would you say negative things about living in Panama? Because, you know, we have to shoot it straight to the people. You know, Panama is great, but no place is perfect. So, you know, if you could tell people what you think, or maybe a few of the negatives um, that you, or things that maybe didn't meet your expectations when moving to Panama. Well, I would say, especially for people that live in uh, the DC metro or California or Atlanta area, and they know how crazy that traffic gets. For me, when I'm in Panama, I would do anything for that for that traffic because this traffic is just a whole nother it's a whole nother conversation that i'm not fluid in um so i would say it's definitely the traffic um it has taken me some time to feel confident at all to drive um just because the aggression and it's just the whole style is completely different for me so i would say that's the biggest thing because i eventually at first i said i'm not gonna drive here and then, um, you know, we were kind of putting the house together. We would come like two weeks, two, two times, two weeks out the year as before we moved here. And uh, I would want to do stuff around the house and Alfredo would want to be doing something else. And I'm like, I don't want to blow his vacation, but I want to go to the store. So eventually I was just like, okay, uh, give me the keys. I'm finna drive. And so I do drive in Brisa, um, but I do not drive in the city and I have no desire whatsoever to do so. Maybe at some point I will, but I don't. So that would be the number one. Okay, that would be the number one. Now a close second. <laughs> A low second is them geckos. Oh, yeah. I don't live in a rural area because you know why. Because I'm the suburban chick. And one of the reasons that I don't do a lot of rural and stuff like that is because I'm not real, you know, I'm not real comfortable with nature. I am a suburban chick. Yeah. So 
the get-go's. Uh, where we live, fortunately, you know, it's new construction. It ain't no whole, it's in a planned urban community. There's no, um, you know, a whole bunch of trees and stuff around me. And one, one thing I do appreciate about the geckos in, in this part of Panama, at least, is they stay where they stay oh, they during the day. <laughs> They'll come out tonight. They come out at night when the sun go down. They be like, I mean, they almost come out like clockwork. You know, when the sun goes down, I'm gonna go out and see one or two on my carport. But besides that, you know, I'm working to I'm working through that. But just to be honest with you, I don't like critters like that. I'm from Jersey. I had never seen one until I went to Mississippi, and I just don't like lizards and things that move fast. Period. So, the other thing, the last thing, is I'm not gonna say it's a negative thing because it would be very inappropriate for me to say that. I'm going to say it's a challenging thing for me, and it's Spanish. Mm -hmm. It's Spanish. Spanish is it's a real, you know, it's a real challenge. I'm getting ready to start with a um, uh, an instructor, and um, just to see how that goes. With me being away for nine months didn't help much. You know, I was getting a lot better coming every month and everything like that, but um, Pan Panama is a Spanish speaking um, country and you know you can't go to Panama expecting them to speak English to you period if they can speak English to you and they're bilingual bilingual that's just icing on the cake but don't come to Panama thinking that they're supposed to learn English because you hear I'm just saying yep. now my husband of course is completely bilingual and um I really have taken that full advantage of him. I mean, you know, obviously you had to, right? Hard, I'd be like, Alfredo, please help me. Papa. <laughs> help, me. <laughs> help me, Papa. Help me. Ayuda. I said a certain word I know. I know help. Ayuda, I know, the, excuse me, the scope, and I know lo siento, because I'm not trying to get into no trouble. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry, so sorry. Um, so I would say they were my th three things that I can think of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I guess since you're on the Spanish, um, por que decidiste comenzar la página de Facebook? Um, black expats in Panama. That's what you asked me? Yeah, I asked you, why did you decide to start the Facebook page? Yeah, yeah I'm okay. About okay. The black expats in well, Panama. I was close. I was close. On it, yeah. You know, let me tell you real fast. A friend of mine had a son that was learning to read. And he cracked me up when he told me this story. He said his son would take the newspaper, because my friend read, used to read the newspaper all the time. His son would take the newspaper. He just read the only words he know. He said, us, from, <laughs> you. <laughs> so that's kind of how I do Spanish. I just be try trying to hear some words that I, that I know. So I definitely knew Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to, trying to work it out. So the reason that I created um, Black Expats in Panama on Facebook, and we do have a page and a group. The group is much more active. Um, when I created this um, uh, Black Expats in Panama, it was May of 2019. So it's been around for a minute, and I just didn't know how everything like that was going to work. I didn't want somebody to grab up the page. And while well, I just had the group, so I just have both. So I'm trying to get everybody together. But right. anyway. Right. I created that because I bought Sister Locks to Panama. So Sister Locks is what I do. Locks Forever is my business. And I needed to reach Black expats. That was my initial goal. I needed to reach Black expats because they were going to be the ones, they're going to be my primary clients. Okay. Like, um, they're looking for somebody like you, but just don't know how to find you. Exactly. And as I looked at the other expat pages that, you know, were available on on Facebook. To be honest, as a black person, and some of the things that we look for um, in going to a new place, I just couldn't relate. I just found it to be a little messy. Um, I, I just I just couldn't relate. And finally, I just said, I'm just gonna start my own page. How about that? Right. And so I just started putting a little stuff on there here and there. Um, and then I was also talking about a trip that I was going to be doing to Panama in January 2020. I used it for that. But what had happened was when COVID hit, 
when COVID hit, and I would say Alonzo literally from July to now, that page has added 1,300 members. I've seen it. And 1,300 members that are, you know, active and um, interested in, in relocating. And I think that between the pandemic and that, that, that perfect storm of the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement and all the things that we were going through in the country, it just made people say, you know what? Maybe I could do better than this. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so the page got really busy. And, you know, people, I could see a need for things by the way that people, the things that people were saying. And then I got the idea to do a tour. I said, you know, mm -hmm. hey, let's go to Panama, you know? And, and I thought, when I go to Panama, when I bring groups to Panama, and it's not my first time, I like to expose them to the Black culture in Panama. So that's what it was really all about. That's kind of what I'm really all about. And um, so that's kind of how that started. And then it ended up saying, hey, listen, y'all want to see some places you can live in Panama? You know, and, and the thing too is that I would be on those other pages. And if you were ever on those other pages, you would think that there was two places to live in Panama, Boquete and Coronado. That's it. <laughs> And I was like, but there is so much more, you know? And so I, I, said, I said, I got to tell y'all about my Brees of the Gulf Norte. And then the conversation just blossomed from there. And I have just been, I, I work with a destination management company and a real estate, they're actually a real estate company too here. And we have just been building and building to, you know, serve the people and to get more Black expats or potential black expats interested in Panama and even other um, even other countries and we are expanding into black expats worldwide That's right. so we'll be going to um, uh, Belize I have a trip going to Belize in July and um, we're going to um, um, you know Costa Rica and places like that too so it just kind of evolved. You know, everything about me is very organic. Mm -hmm. I don't have a business plan. Never have. 